Welcome back to Falcons Franchise. We have a back-to-back -back upload of Falcons Franchise for the first time in a long time. And you know what? It, it's good. Merry Christmas, right? No Mock Draft Monday because of Christmas, but we'll get one probably next Monday. Be a really interesting draft. Could shake things up. Maybe the Bears don't go quarterback. I, I don't know if that's going to end up happening. If you pick at number one, I think there's a good chance. If your quarterback situation's at all in flux, and we'll see if Matt Eberflew sticks around and Matt Nagy and all that. Not Matt Nagy. What did I just say? Um, Matt Nagy is long gone. Their offensive coordinator is Luke Getze. I don't know why I said Matt Nagy, but anyway, new coach comes in, new quarterback could be on the way. So the Bears, is Justin Fields the guy? Maybe he is, but maybe he isn't. If you pick at number one, is it worth it? We'll see. Panthers decided it was worth it, and they traded up with the Bears last year for Bryce Young, who we're going to play today. Panthers are 3-6, and six, and I think could be a bigger problem to face than the uh, San Francisco 49ers from a week ago. They just usually don't play me very tough in Madden for whatever reason, at least not on Madden 24. So who knows what Carolina has in store after we beat the 49ers 54-42 a week ago. They had a bunch of big plays on offense, but we were actually able to outscore them and get the win. So amazing game. The offense was as good as it ever has been besides one interception return for a touchdown to start that second half. But uh, we'll see what the Carolina Panthers have in store. Get into strategy. Hope the team stays fairly healthy. I think for Bryce Young, we're going to try and defend the short pass. That's kind of where we've been more susceptible to being beat recently. And then as for actually playing offense, I like throw it deep. Throw it short just encourages the pass rush to get there quicker, which I don't particularly love. You know what? I vowed to never wear these in this series with the gradient, but you know what? They look so ridiculous that the day after Christmas, you know what, feels like it goes together. They got the red fade. We can pretend the black is green for Christmas colors. It looks terrible, in my opinion. I do not like a gradient fade on a jersey. I think it looks a lot cooler in the game, to be honest, than it does in real life. That doesn't look so bad in the game. But in real life, in my opinion, it looks absolutely ridiculous. But... We're going to give them their day in the sun here as we take on the Carolina Panthers. A joke in real life to go along with our uniforms, but could be pretty good in the game. I think that kind of coincides. It does kind of make sense, though, that... Oh, okay. That's an interesting throw from Bryce Young. And a broken tackle by Jonathan Mingo. It does kind of make sense, though, that the Falcons would have a red uniform. I don't know that they actually have a red uniform that they wear anymore. I, like, their alternate is this one, I guess. But, you know, the throwbacks don't really have one. The only thing you'd actually see from the Falcons with red is their, like, 2000s Michael Vick throwbacks. But I don't think they wear those in real life, do they? I don't think so. But I don't, I don't watch every Falcons game, so it's, you know, tough to know for certain. As Miles Sanders is going to have a burst through the hole on the left side there and get to the second level and third level easily. Javon Holland ends up bringing him down. But Carolina is off to a red-hot start because I'm too focused at these red-hot jerseys. Need to focus on the actual game. We're going to go man coverage, try to put some pressure on Bryce Young. And he's dealing with it extremely well. That's one of the quickest touchdowns you're ever going to see. Zay Jones into the end zone. Uh, did we even bother playing defense on that drive? Doesn't appear that we did. Our defense is like Swiss cheese recently. I mean, four plays, 75 yards. It was a minute and 45 seconds. It felt like 30 seconds of real lifetime. They were into the end zone almost instantly. Well, might be another game where we have to score a lot of points to win. And uh, we'll see if we can do that. We're starting out in a heavy package. I might go play action instantly and then go hurry up into a run, depending on how this play works. You ordinarily might want to do those in opposite orders as we can't find John Fitzpatrick on the run. But that's okay. Crack toss is one of the worst plays in the playbook. We're going to try it. Second and 10. We can utilize Bijan's speed here to the outside. And we kind of got a block for a second. Bijan breaks a tackle. We get one yard. I don't think that that's a play we can go back to ever again. It's four plays. It's been 
no gain or negative yards every play. I'm not going to say I'm never going to try that again, knowing me that it's going to happen, but it seems to be pretty terrible. So it wouldn't be an awful play to retire. We're going to check down to Bijan. He's going to make these guys miss in the open field. That was a given. Easy check down in that spot. I know we just barely get the first down, but in my opinion, there was no doubt in my mind that Bijan was going to find a way there. We give Tyler Algier a carry or two. We'll stretch run. It is towards the strength of the Panthers' defense. Derek Brown, Brian Burns right there. I thought the cutback was awesome there, and it really should have been. With Bijan Robinson, I think that's a big-time play. With Tyler Algier, he's just not quick or agile enough as we're going to find Neil Madsen. And we'll also pick up the first down. More Neil Madsen. Yeah, I love that route. It's delayed just enough that pretty much everything in front of him clears out. And then it just becomes wide open. Love that. Made our way to the 48-yard line. Of course, four down territory at this part of the field for me. But that, of course, will not matter. Bijan Robinson can't make one man miss. If he did, might have had a touchdown on a long run. But Jeremy Chin is just too quick. And is able to close down Bijan and make that play. Although we could utilize speed here and make that, uh, you know, center field type safety single high. Make a decision. Probably in a cover three. We're going to throw it deep to the end zone. Quinton Drummond, go up and get it! And he does! The Quinton Drummond breakout continues! Sometimes you just give your best players a shot down the field, and we hope that Quinton Drummond can end up being one of our best players. We traded up for him in the first round. We're expecting big-time plays out of him. He's got 90-plus spectacular catch. Great speed down the field. I envision him as the big-time deep threat in this offense. We haven't really seen it a ton. However, lately his numbers have been incredible compared to the start of his career. And I think he's really evolving into being the player we expected that he could be when we drafted him. I'm loving the development of Quinton Drummond so far. Again, slow to start, but he's coming on really strong lately. And we're going to continue to give him shots. The crosser underneath might have been more open, might have been a more guaranteed moving down the field but sometimes especially on a you know first down you want to take a shot down the field see if somebody can make a play that's what we did and as you can see we're tied up as a result great stuff we're going to try turning zones into match coverage so basically what that means if you don't know is uh, essentially routes are going to be carried they're not going to be just sticking to their zone necessarily if they deem a player to be their responsibility over the middle let's say and he's running a crosser or something like that, the player that picks up that route could carry it. And then what that means, of course, is just run with the route, try to stay in phase. And we're going to try that out. I also want to make sure my cornerback receiver matchups are done right. I think I want to do that based on overall, as Bolden has great speed. Shut him down on his first attempt, but I think he gets 23 yards on his second. Good coverage there. Probably going to try a little bit more zone coverage. Uh, basically, again, what, what match is, is zone can turn to man. That's the easiest way to explain it. Pretty self-explanatory. The cover, or the route just gets matched. Uh, instead of, or if you're in a flat drop, you just stay in the flats. So, we'll see if that plays well for us today. I haven't really tried it a ton in Madden 24, but it's nice that you have the option now. And uh, we'll see if our defense takes a step up. Bryce Young going to scramble up the middle, break a tackle, and get drilled. But picks up eight yards. I, I'm trying to do whatever I can to make our defense play better. We really saw an emergence last week from our top ten pick, Deion Dobbins, out of LSU. Need to see more of a pass rush, and that's, that was a big jump last week. That was a big start. Second and five, last play of the first quarter. Staying over the middle, and that could have been intercepted. I think the receiver kind of set a screen in front of Deshaun Humphreys. He wasn't able to locate the football. We're going to get one more play here in the first quarter. And, man, an interception in that spot would have been huge. Would have kept the Panthers off the board. Just wide open over the middle. My fault. Brought Dylan Stanley down. Kind of vacated our zone a little bit. And, of course, great route. Running in, in breaking route in behind us. It's just a good route combo. 
you know, take the linebacker away, a little eye candy underneath, and then throw it behind him. And we probably wouldn't have been able to make a play anyway. Linebackers just don't jump in this game. But I was definitely fooled on that one. Panthers offense off to a red hot start. And I said that this could be the case. The Panthers, I thought, would be more tough than the 49ers were. Just generally how these games go for whatever reason. It's in division, I get it. You know, these games are a little bit tougher to win. But the 49ers are one of the best teams in the league. Although, I guess you wouldn't know it based on what the Ravens did to them last night as I record this. I like this idea, at least, because Bijan Robinson essentially makes this like a pitch type of run if we want. If he doesn't get picked up in the, in the uh, flat there, it's just easy to throw it to him. I would have liked for him to carry the route out to the sideline. I don't really know why he stopped, because he would have been wide open. This is such a perplexing and confusing decision from CPU Bijan Robinson to be open and then kind of start to stutter like he's going to break. He should be running essentially a table route, right? Where he gets out into the flat. It's not quite the same because it's flat, you know, behind the line. But I don't know for what reason he thought to chop his feet there and break down. Get out there. We're going to hit you in stride. It would have been a massive play. Instead, it's second and nine. Really, really annoying. We'll go back to play action that we love so much. We're going to throw on the run, and we're going to find Quentin Drummond. Drummond wide open over the middle. The only question was going to be, can Trey Lance hit him on the run? That was a very difficult throw for Trey Lance to make. Very odd angle, but he's able to find Quentin Drummond, who is doing very interesting dance moves. Somebody was complaining about dance moves in the comments, which I thought I was a grumpy, crotchety old man with some of my takes and opinions, but that's crazy. Uh, it really ruins the series when players dance after first downs. I'm not controlling it. I'm just not doing anything. They're dancing on their own, which I think is actually a song, which uh, the commenter would probably hate. Drake London, great curl route, and a big time first down. Drake London doesn't get a ton of targets per game, but when he does, they're big time targets. It's usually for first downs or touchdowns. And he's just kind of our chain mover. And a lot of times it's it's the tight ends on crossers or drumming lately down the field. But Drake London, especially in the low red zone when we want to pass, he's been great lately. He's been great. People kind of wanted us to trade him as Bijan Robinson will do the job for the offense, find the end zone. But for me, Drake London, he is good. He's just not the focal point. Now, I get the idea of trading him and trying to get some more value. Maybe beef up the defense. But I think Drake London serves a purpose. And I don't really think we can afford to get too much worse at the receiver position. When we have to get a play, when we have to get somebody to win down the field or make a big catch, lately Drake London's been that guy. I know it might only be one or two, maybe even three times a game. But sometimes those are the plays that decide games. So really don't have any plans to move Drake London it's not something I've really even considered very much at all, other than reading it and being like, no. I think we just keep him. I think he's too good. Is he ever going to be the focal point of this offense? You know, six, seven catches a game? I don't think so. This is more of a tight end focused offense, running back focused offense. These receivers are always going to be secondary or tertiary. They're just not really going to be, you know, double digit catch guys ever. To run. Nobody's there. Miles Sanders breaks a tackle from Deshaun Humphreys, gets another first down. He's averaging a whole hell of a lot of yards per carry right now. The Panthers have been really able to do whatever they want on offense. We got to figure out a way to shut it down. I don't know if more man coverage, more zone coverage, just mixing it up, throwing different looks at them. That's probably the way to do it. But we really haven't defended the run well either. The Panthers are just doing whatever they want. Second and six. Check down to the running back, Miles Sanders. Looks like he broke an initial Jesse Bates tackle and gets within two yards of the first down. Third and two. This is a situation, this is a spot where I really want to blitz. On the 44-yard line, maybe on the edge of field goal range, I think if we get a sack in this spot, the Panthers would probably punt as opposed to going for it or maybe even trying a long field goal. So we're trying to drive them out of field goal range. And let's see what they end up doing. A.J. Terrell on the breakup there. Fourth and two, and they're going to punt from our 44-yard line. It's such a weak punt call on fourth and short. It's so dumb. 
it's the dumbest decision ever, and they did it for 20 yards of field position. It's so dumb. Bijan about 40 yards away from 1,000 yards on the season. Another really great season for him. He's been such a good player for us, obviously. And I'd love to get it on this drive. Let's see if we can. I'm trying to cut back and change direction. Just lost momentum. Although Bijan has also been an amazing receiver. Could have uh, hit him there for a huge gain. Just didn't quite have the time. Panthers sent, I think, at least five. And I just did not pick it up. Somebody ran right through. They did send five. A little, little action there on that right side. And now it's the center who got confused. So what probably needs to happen here is the center needs to pick up the three tech on the left. And the left guard needs to try to get over to pick up this looper. Just doesn't end up happening. And it's third and long. Had quite a few of those lately. Lance on the move. We actually might try to scramble for it. Would have been better off just taking a shot down the field. I actually thought Lance had a decent chance to get that. We end up being 10 yards shy. And now the punt decision looks great for Carolina. Who's open here? I mean, shot to Drake London on that far left side could have been an option. Maybe just throw it up to Drum and see if he can make another great catch. Now, Madsen ends up coming a little bit open. I think by the time we threw that football, the defender would have closed in on it. And he wasn't committed to just sitting there anyway. As kind of noticed, we were trying to run. I thought at this point we'd have the angle. Defender just kind of changed his pursuit angle and made a nice play. That's all there is to it. We'll punt the football back, and Panthers actually will call a timeout. They want to score again before the end of this first half, obviously, but... I don't think they need to call a timeout there. Just to save 13 seconds? All right. I mean, the two-minute warning is another timeout. So, you know what? If you think you need it, there you go. Oh, that's wide open. The rookie Carrington in coverage. Jason, not Jose. Make that distinction. He just couldn't cover down the field. And he's a bigger corner, 6'4", over 200 pounds. It is tougher to kind of stick with a smaller, shiftier player in space. He's more of a guy that we use to defend the deep ball. Good enough coverage from Dylan Stanley there. But Carolina, again, moving down the field, doing about whatever they want to do. I'm not really sure how to stop them yet. Maybe press coverage and just try to make them, uh, or try to make separation a problem, and it looks like that could be the move. It's intercepted by Jeff Okuda. Big turnover. We have a minute to end up trying to score before halftime. Definitely possible. Safety's going to buzz down. Bijan might want to pick this up. Although we could use him as a receiver. Probably smarter to do that. Just get the football out quickly. Big turnover. Wasn't really ready for it. Wasn't expecting it. And that's not who I wanted to throw to. Oh my god. Bijan is wide open. Why do I consistently make this mistake? where I confuse Y and RB. I know the running back can be both. I really have to be aware of what it is before the snap because Bijan is absolutely wide open. Imagine I'm throwing it to him right here. It would have been an awesome play. It would have been so good. And instead, I throw into double coverage down the field. And I think it's obvious that I'm genuinely making a mistake there. I'm not just, you know, lying about it. Because Bichon was wide open. I love to throw to the running back. I usually just don't even throw it down the field. So it's it's almost crazy. And, oh, man, we didn't get it to Kyle Pitts. Huge missed opportunity. We're sacked again. Too much thinking about where I wanted to go with the football. Not enough throwing it there. Third and 18. Get out of play action. Throw it to Quinton Drummond. And we're actually going to pick up this first down. No, we're not because Drummond dropped it. That's a catch you got to make. Our offense is stalling a bit here. The last couple drives have been terrible. More pass committing could be a way to stop them. Haven't really been running the ball as much, and they're unlikely to do it in this situation. Young under pressure ends up throwing it away. You can see the panic setting in. He's able to stay composed and throw it out of bounds near a receiver. Third and 10. Going to go contain. Going to go pass commit. Zone coverage is going to match here. Young going to take off. He's finding enough space. How are we not able to get him, man? We're trying to deliver that hit stick. Him picking up the first down, I'm not really too worried about. It's our final timeout. But a fumble there would have been big. 
We're going to take it over at midfield. Probably would have guaranteed a field goal. But we let him scramble and pick up the first down. Unfortunate. Under 10 seconds to go in the half. Panthers got to hurry here. I don't even know if they're trying to get out of bounds. Tackle him. Bring him down in bounds. Yes. Triple zeros on the clock. That's halftime. Tied up at 14. Very interesting game so far. The biggest reason that we haven't been able to pull away is just allowing sacks. It's really hard to move the football on third and long. We've had way too many of them in this game. Got to tighten things up in the second half. Got to play better. And we'll see if we can do it. We'll try defending the medium pass for the second half. See if that shuts down Carolina a little bit more. And we'll see what the offense can do. Definitely want to lean on B. John Robinson on this first try, but we might not even have one. Drum into the open field. The speedy Bolden in pursuit. Will he catch him? No. Quentin Drummond. Kick return for a touchdown. I talked to you about getting him the football a ton this year. When we do, exciting things happen. It's a big part of why he's a return man for us. He's been returning kicks, you know, off and on. Put him back there this week, and he's come up massively. Kickoff, return for a touchdown. Gives us the lead, an electric opener to this third quarter. And the second touchdown of the game for Drummond. This one coming on special teams. Okay, let's see what their offense looks like in this second half. Man coverage on the running back with Jesse Bates. Quick throw over the middle. So as soon as we take off to fend the short pass, what do the Panthers go to? A short pass, obviously. They know what we want to do. They know the game plan already. We got a mole in the locker room. We got to kill him. Or fire him, I mean, is probably better. Just fire him. We don't have to murder him. We could, I guess. Probably would send a message. I don't know if it's the right kind of message, but... I'm not, I don't know if it's the wrong kind of message either. Oh, Young going to go down here. It's Arnold Ebikati. Young tried to scramble. You were seeing Deion Dobbins kind of get pushed around the pocket. Young tried to step up through that gap. We sent Heat. We got to him. It was Ebikati off the edge, though. Not really who you expect when you send uh, two Mike backers up there, you know, showing double A gap. You, you, funny to think about two middle linebackers. But uh, that's essentially what we had playing both a gaps and they came in really odd on Bryce Young and see if we can use Bijan Robinson on this drive our initial plan before the kickoff return for a touchdown and uh no no is the answer second and 13 I think Drummond's gonna get open here no he's not JC Horn with the pick oh, good stuff why bother trying to throw with anticipation in this game we even see what their coverage was I thought he was in a in a quarter or deep third at the very least didn't really think this was man coverage at all although it could be just man coverage playing off man but the safety rotates over we see what this was I think it was just man coverage I thought there'd be more space maybe this football comes out late I don't really think it does we throw it before he gets to the top of his route just the right coverage for it. Curl routes, good in NCAA 14 for Riverside Royals. Not good for me and Madden, that's for sure. It's absolutely terrible. All right, we're actually not going to send pressure here. Let's get out of it. Bryce Young taking a shot down the field. AJ Terrell's there, and it's another interception for Bryce Young. Unfortunately, we're going to start inside our own 10 on the five-yard line. But a big turnover, never mad about that, especially after one for me. And that's happened a lot this year. A lot of times after we turn over the football, we get one immediately back. Gotta love the defense stepping up and making a play. And we'll see if our offense can get out of the back of our own end zone here. Only two yards to start from Robinson. Let's see if we can switch sides here and move Kyle Pitts over. That's great. Safety's buzzed down. Rotate over at least. Block from the fullback. Algier, not the most agile. Tried to juke back, and he gets three. Third down and six. Give Bijan a chance. He stopped. I liked our chances one-on-one. -on -one. Jeremy Chinch has been really good today. We will punt. I'm disappointed with the two. Missed opportunities for sure. 
Algier run was tough. I really wish Bijan was just in the game. You really have one run. You got to step off the field. Frustrating. I might want to mess with my auto sub settings again. Algier's been getting quite a few carries lately for a lot of play time. It's not the worst thing, but he's not Bijan Robinson. So we got to be careful with that. And of course, broken tackles from Jonathan Mingo again. Oh, it's intercepted by Jesse Bates. I don't know if the receiver even knew the football was coming at him. Obviously not on the same page with Bryce Young as he's thrown his third interception of the game. Not like he hit the receiver in the chest or anything. But there was no effort made by the receiver to catch that ball. We've seen this animation so much this year. Jesse Bates just right place, right time. It's like he knew for some reason Bryce Young was not going to be accurate with that throw at all. And it's an easy interception. It's not out of position if the quarterback makes a th an awful throw right to you. Genius, as usual, from Jesse Bates. Play action. I see the fullback. We're going to take a shot down the field for George Espinosa, and he nearly made the catch. Oh, my goodness. That might be the first time we've ever had George Espinosa on a route past the line of scrimmage. It could have been beautiful. Arms outstretched. He couldn't reel it in. Oh, the potential was there, though. Lance under pressure again. This time there is room to scramble. And there goes Trey Lance. Look at the block from Bijan. Pick up another. A massive scramble from Trey Lance. More than 30 yards. We're up to 69 total rushing yards on the game. Nice. Drummond with enough space. Make somebody miss, Drummond. Can't do it. Oh, there we go. Right up the middle for Bijan. That might be the most successful run today, you know. Eight rushes for 27 yards. Certainly not the best game we've seen Bijan play. But if they're going to, you know, keep showing us light boxes, we should keep running. Got good blocks there. Now, you know, Bijan did have a touchdown earlier. That was probably his best run of the game. But that one might have been a close second. First and goal, look who it is. The vulture in the backfield. We're going to give him the football and do nothing. Second and goal as we come to the end of the third quarter. Lance is wide open up the middle. You can't forget about the quarterback. And he burned them with a long run this drive too. They completely forgot that that's an option. Lance scrambles right up the middle. And he's had quite a few rushing touchdowns this year in big spots. That was certainly one to make this a two score game. And they just didn't account for the quarterback. Big mistake from Carolina. It's 28 to 14. This is the pull away that we needed. It's time for the fourth quarter here in Atlanta. We're able to get a lead, and we've been outrushed, we've been outpassed, but we haven't been outclassed. We've obviously made our possessions count, and we've been sacked, we've lost yardage that way as well. But we're in a good spot right now, and we just got to play some defense. Something that's been a little bit tough for us lately, and they've only given Miles Sanders six carries. It's so bizarre this year, the CPU just really doesn't like to run the ball. And I feel like this has usually not been the case up until Madden 24. They don't run. I mean, you have great running backs getting fewer than 10 carries a game. And it's not a quarter length issue because we're able to get Bijan comfortably 15 and 20 most games, which is pretty usual of the NFL. But the CPU just, they don't give their good running backs chances as they continue to leave the big play down the field open over the middle when the under route distracts me it's like basically a levels concept and I keep falling for the short route trying to make a play and they throw it behind me every single time here's a shot down the field that's a big catch great throw from young Carolina's inside the five fullback dive completely shut down by Dylan Stanley or at least let him out of the end zone kept him out down to the one though so they are Still very close. Run this to the left. We're going to shoot that gap. B gap open, make a play. Well, they ran back to the right. And that was not the right decision. Sanders loses a couple. It's Dylan Stanley again. Probably shouldn't be running at Dylan Stanley. Got too much speed. Oh, they're going to go from empty here. Got to be a pass. Got to get up near the line. Because Jonathan Mingo is wide open. Oh, that's his seventh catch of the game. This one for a touchdown. Panthers not out of it yet. 
Great zone coverage there on the goal line, leaving everything open. That was fantastic. Under six minutes to play. Let's take some of this clock down. We just can't run the ball. Bijan averaging just over three and a half yards per carry in this one. This is not a great performance. The Panthers' run D has just been very good. And I'm sure I'm missing holes. My specialty. But it's no excuse. We got to be able to make these uh, correct reads and, and our blocking obviously can be better. That was nearly intercepted by Von Bell. Instead, it's a big play down the field to Drake London. We don't worry about nearly this, nearly that. It wasn't. Great play. I mean, I do in real life, but in the game. Dude, I don't, I don't care about, oh, I almost threw a pick. I care about, oh, there's another first down to Drake London. Another catch for number five. Run up the middle. It's like we keep getting sucked into tacklers. I feel like there's open area that I'm trying to hit. And we're just not able to get skinny enough through the hole or something. I feel like I don't have full control when running the ball here. And of course, we're brought down from behind. Let's split these safeties. Three seconds left on the play clock. Let's just check down. Keep the clock moving at least. Here's why that's a good thing. We can bring this down to the two minute warning. We can get a field goal up on the board. And uh, we can make this two possession game again. I think that's the way to play it. Don't be too crazy. Don't throw a pick trying to be a hero down the field. Don't be a hero. Just take your points. Go up by two possessions and win the game. And the kick from Young Wei Ku, oh, I was going to say is good. I rushed that a little bit. I forgot that the meter is really slow with that new ability. But that's okay. Kick goes in. Young Wei, too, or Young Wei Ku is too good to miss. He's Young Wei too good to miss is what I was trying to say. We're up by 10, under two minutes to go. Panthers are going to need some help. They do have three timeouts, but they need a very quick score. And then if you're using those timeouts, you got to rely on an onside kick, which we've converted in this series very recently, but it's a low percentage play. So they have their work cut out for them. Need 10 points in two minutes without allowing a score from us, really. You can allow a field goal, I guess, but I prefer not to. And if Jonathan Mingo keeps breaking tackles every time he catches the ball, we're going to be in a tough spot. But they get an extra 15 yards from a face mask, so... Why even worry? Jesse Bates is here. I, I hate him. I hate him. Why even worry about timeouts when you can just get a defensive penalty and free yards and stop the clock via the defensive penalty? Obviously, Mingo's... Ah, oh God, he's killing us. Press the corners. Make them make separation. That's got to be a pick. What are you doing, Deshaun Humphreys? You got to see that the ball's being thrown behind you. Open your eyes. Johnny Hamilton injured on the play. Losing our second best interior defensive lineman after already losing our first. And our linebackers just can't keep up. Brandon Cooks, I haven't really seen much of him today at all. Elbow sprain. Get him back on the field. Third and three, you're 380 pounds. Just get in the way. Huge third down, we know it's play action. Bryce Young gonna scramble or is he? He's trying to buy time. Lobs to the end zone, and it's picked off by Jeff Okuda. Uh, why are we trying to return this? Don't worry about it. That could be the game-ending interception. Bryce Young just trying to do too much. That's third down. You don't have to throw that into traffic there. You can live for fourth down. Obviously, you got to have it then, but this was not a got-to-have-it play. This was third and short. Game not on the line. Now, made a mistake by not taking the touchback. We lost 11 yards in field position here. But first downs end the game. That's what we need right now. Carolina going to have to burn their final timeouts. And whether we get the first down or not, it's going to be incredibly tough for them to win this game. But we might get the first down and more. There goes Bijan Robinson. Bijan down the sideline. Stayed in bounds. Carolina calls their final timeout. And that should be your ball game. Bijan with his longest run of the game is going to ice things in Atlanta. And you know what? Some time on the clock. Carolina is going to be calling those timeouts. So let's try to get some extra yardage for Bijan Robinson. Trying to get 100 yards every single time we uh, play a game. And we've been pretty good at that this year. But this is one of those games where obviously it was a little bit more difficult to find yardage. But he's hit the over. Over betters rejoice. 
101 yards for Bijan Robinson like he's a Dalmatian. Is that to, is that a reference that a lot of you won't get now? Is 101 Dalmatians? Is that too old now? Some of you probably don't know what that is. I'm assuming most of you do. But if you don't, uh, it's a movie. Cruella DeVille. Man, was she a villain. That's my review of Cruella DeVille. Good looking last, though. <laughs> Just my type. I didn't get a screenshot for the thumbnail. Oh, Lord. I was distracted by Cruella DeVille, man. Unbelievable. Trey Lance has been playing well, though. He's got an upgrade. Go strong arm. Try to get deep throw accuracy to be upgraded. Give me deep throw accuracy. All right, plus one. Also plus one to throw accuracy mid and break sack. Not awful for Trey Lance, but not a lot happened. Not a lot, to be honest. But he's up to a 78 overall. Still a young quarterback, just 25 years old. I'd love for normal development to be upgraded to star, but got to cut down on those interceptions and uh, got to start throwing more touchdowns. These are not awful numbers. They're pretty realistic for, you know, an up-and-coming starting quarterback. 2,500 yards, 17 touchdowns to eight interceptions. And of course, last year he didn't play the entire season. Trey Lance uh, ends up having more yards this season. Still the same long, though, interestingly enough. But very similar numbers, to be honest. He's played a little bit better this year, though. Which I wouldn't have guessed, but he did have some awful games last year at times. But very similar numbers, except the yards per game is up by 100 yards. That's incredibly significant. He's been awesome this year. And I, I guess that's probably mostly because he was counted as a backup. Still playing, maybe, you know, holding kicks or something like that. Possibility. But, uh, yeah. Big win again. We're rolling. We're 8-2. and two. The games have been close. The games have been close, right? They're not blowouts. They've been fun. This week is our bye. And uh, maybe we'll talk about focus players in the next episode. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.